How's it going, everybody? Um, pottery is thousands of years old. And there's not too much that's new and new. It's like, no one's really coming up with new ideas. Um, ideas are ideas. Uh, we take part of this one and part of this one, put it together. We end up with something new, maybe something different for us. Pottery is basically just a series of techniques, a bunch of different little tries and fails, okay? Uh, and what works, we keep. What fails, obviously, we throw away, or we learn from, at least. So today, I'm gonna try something different, something I haven't done yet, something I haven't um, you know, uh, done for a long time. There's two bases that I throw, that I like, that I like to throw in. One I call a patchwork base, and it looks like this, okay? Now, the other one is silicaware, or a crackle base, and it looks like this, okay? Well, I was wondering if I took the two of them and put them together, what it would look like. So that's what we're gonna to do today. All right, so let's get started, all right? So let me turn my head around. I'm gonna get myself in potter mode and we'll uh, dust off here. I've got some red stone here and I've got some white stone here. What I'm gonna do is roll this stuff out. Roll the white out first. Doesn't have to be perfect, just don't try and get some long skinny logs here. Fancy nothing pretty per on our guys. It's just my twisties together. Okay. Now we go over to the to the uh oh, there I some these panels. All oh, those are need one to start with. I put a line on my, my little canvas thing here. That tells me where the center of this is. That's where this bar is going across here. So that's what that's for. Alright. Now I just put these on here like that. It doesn't matter how they're on there. We're just gonna roll them into a slab anyway. But they want sort of a modeled looking slab to start with. nice big thin piece of flat material. You know what? I think I might go a little bit thinner with that. I think, I think, I think, I think. Let me see. Let me see what it looks like. You know what? Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Right back. Oops. I'm back. Alright. Pull this up. Pull this over. Take a little tear that off without need all that. I'll save that clay for another project. Looks like that. And we're gonna put the last board in there. And if I do, I'll just re I'll just re-roll it. Now I'll tear this part off. Over there, out of the way, and we'll maybe tear this part off too. 
You don't need that either. I'm not worried about these lines that are in here or any of that kind of crap. Or I'm not worried about what the texture of the fabric is going to do to the clay. Not, a, not an issue for this project. Like I said, you're along for the ride as I try to figure this out. Now, we'll take this, and I'm just going to grab it by the fabric here. That's the easiest way to pick it up. And put moon over to me. Flop down. Stay over here. I'm not too worried about tear or that kind of crap. Now, that's part one. I've got two sides to this. So every side I decide to use, I'm thinking, I think I might use the other side. Yeah, I think I'll use that side instead. It's got a little more life to it. Now, now we go to the wheel and throw a paste. All right, I got about four pounds of clay. I wedged it up over on the wedging table. Put that in the middle. Probably should have put some water on that wheel, but that's all right. Gotta get some. Now. Water. Now, when you do this, one thing I always tell people when you're throwing anything on the wheel, put the water on your hands, not on the clay. I see people take a sponge and they'll go like, Ugh, and they end up with this ball of snot at the end. Don't do that. Especially if you're using like something like porcelain. Put the water on your hands and then on the foot. Alright? It's still gonna get, you know, plenty lubricated. And it's not gonna it's still gonna slip through your through your hands just as But when it when it starts to catch on your hands, get your hands wet. And then put that on there. Okay? You have better control of how much water goes on the clay that way. Don't end up with a big wet piece of clay. Some people can throw that way. I can't. I mean, no judgment here. Dial down there. Uh. Kind of boring looking, it's just a cylinder. So now I'm gonna take that 
slab that I rolled out earlier. That was their color. And I'm going to tear it in little teeny tiny pieces. Okay? And those pieces are going to get stuck to the side of it. Just random. Okay? Boop. Like that. Just patchwork it on there. Get them as close as you can because you're going to have a lot of empty space in the dog. I'll make sure we get that on there pretty good. sit down side here, put the paint roller on the outside, and roll this just so I get a better stick to it. All that stuff is really nailed down pretty good. Voila! Okay. Kind of roll that around a little bit. Alright. Now on the top here, you see I got a little bit up, up in the edge. We don't really want that. So let me grab a cue. I'm going to take that part off. Put out about a half an inch. That's the best for you right there. Now, here comes the hard part. Or not the hard part, but the tedious part. Okay? I'm going to take each one of these and I'm going to paint it with a chip brush. Okay? Get these bad boys pretty cheap. I'm going to paint it with uh, sodium silicon on each one of these. All right? And then I'm going to hit it with a torch, dry them up a little bit, and then I'll belly out the surface. And that should make these crack, but this stay, stayed normal. So let's see what happens. All right, here's my sodium silicon. It's just sodium silicon. I don't know if you can read that or not. But it's just, and they call it liquid glass or whatever. I I'm not really sure what it's used for. But I got it. I use it for this. So we're just going to cover up all those little. Probably put something down. Good little puddle of sodium silicon on my wheel here. I want to get that off. That doesn't go anywhere. Let me 
Let me just do a paper towel here to get some out. Take this, I'm gonna dry that surface. I'm gonna dry that with Mr. Torch. Right. Now, this stuff doesn't go in, back into my scrap bin, okay? I don't want sodium silicate in with my scraps that I recycle and reuse. So we're gonna cut some of that off. Let's see if I got a nice little good and clean here. I'm gonna try this one. I'm gonna cut the bottom just because I want a finished edge on the bottom. I'll do it now. Like I said, this does not go into the scrap bin. Here comes the hard part. This is where I start to belly it out and we'll see if there's any cracks on there. Hope it works. Let's see. I'm gonna take, now this is a, one of the few times that I put water on clay. The only reason is because I need to have that inside real loose. Let her slide that down in there. Bring that up. Getting those sides on nice and slippery. And I'm gonna take the throwing stick again. Get it outside here, and I'm gonna slowly start to belly this stuff out. We aren't in any kind of hurry. We got all day to do this. Wow, you can see that stuff really starting to crack and separate. I think I'm gonna have to. Wow. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna see if I can't roll some of that back again. Yeah. Got it going crazy on me. I'm going to see if we can go a little farther. So neat, stuff just kind of flakes off. Getting the silicone cracks in it. Not too much as I like, but it's still pretty good. It really gives it a neat look, I think. I'm thinking. Finish off the top lip. Get my hand wet.
Let's grab a shampoo. This is taking the crackle base and the patchwork base, combine it to them, and it's made this really funky looking, almost organic looking shape. Um, I guess it is organic. Um, I could probably go a little thinner with it if I wanted to. But spots like this right here would probably go too thin and end up being a hole. Is that a problem? Eh. It is if you want to use, if you want to put flowers in it. Okay, if it's just sitting there as a decorative piece, then it's no problem. See all the neat cracks that are down inside of this? Now I'm gonna glaze this with a dark glaze. Um, kind of a it's, it's ancient jasper. It's a I believe it's an Amico glaze. I use commercial glaze. Well, I'm gonna hit it with the ancient jasper, the whole thing. And then I'm gonna wash off the glaze off of this surface, leave, leave the lip glazed. All the cracks will be filled in with that Amico, with that ancient jasper, that dark glaze, and they should really pop out. But you won't see that on this video. Because I don't think you wanna wait two weeks to see the finished product but you will see it uh, I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done and we'll go from there so that is the things I straightened the lip out let me get my tools over my camera let me get my prying off to where Set this over on the table. All right. Well, that the finished face. Almost forgot. Got to cut it on the bottom. There. Finished face. So let's see what it looks like when I get done. And we'll see if it's see what it looks like when I get done. Um, like I said, probably a couple weeks or so. It's on how fast I get the uh, kiln loaded up. I've got plenty of clay left here for another one if I want. I've got clay over here if I want for another one. I'll probably just run that through the plug wheel. Set it back up. But it's an experiment. And it's like, like I said, you can't start with, I mean, you can't, there's no new ideas in pottery. There's just combinations of old ideas. And that's what this, this is, a combination of an old idea. Uh, two, actually, silica and patchwork. And we'll see how it comes out. So that's all I have. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.